This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, I want to continue talking about our work in the timeline. In our last basic lesson, we talked about some basic editing techniques. And in this lesson, I want to move, or more appropriately enough, transition that discussion to talk about working with basic transitions in our Media Composer timeline. Now, in many cases, you might take a look inside the effects palette and see some wipes and some other transitions in there that you can work with, but that's not necessarily what we're going to be focusing on in this lesson. In this lesson, I want to talk about the quick transition tool, how we're going to use it, and how you can use transitions in your bins to quickly add effects all of the way down the timeline to get the transition looks that you want in a matter of seconds. Okay, let's keep our introduction short. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And you'll remember in the introduction, I talked about how we do have some transitions at our disposal in the standard effects palette. If I press command and eight on the Mac, control and eight on Windows, you'll see that if I scroll down towards the bottom that we have a few transition categories such as the shape wipe and even a spin effect. So I can grab the Y spin here, just drag this in between any two shots in my timeline. And you'll see now that we get the transition just like that. But what we want to talk about in this lesson is the quick transition effect or the quick transition command. And what I'm going to do is just remove that effect from my timeline. And I'm going to call up that window by pressing the backslash key on the keyboard. And as soon as I press the backslash key, you'll see the quick transition window has now appeared. Now, depending on which tracks I have selected in my timeline, by default, that will want to apply the transition to those specific tracks. Now, in this case, I don't have any audio, so that's fine. I only want to apply it to video, but if I didn't have those channels selected and I want to have them selected, I don't need to cancel out. I can just simply click on the ones that I want to have the transition applied to inside of the quick transition window. Now, in most cases, you're going to be choosing from one of two effects. You're going to be using a standard dissolve or a dip to color effect. Now, all of the other transitions work more or less the same as what I'm going to show you here. I just want to pick these two because they're probably the two most common, again, transitions that you're going to be working with in your timeline. Okay, so with Dissolve selected, you'll notice the first parameter we can adjust is the position. Now, do we want to have our transition centered on the cut, ending on the cut, starting on the cut, or we can even have a custom starting point for the Dissolve. Now, I'll be honest, I really never, ever use this one. I keep my Dissolves pretty standard, pretty straightforward. So we're going to leave this on centered on the cut. Now, if I didn't know exactly where I wanted the transition to start, I can even come down and grab the transition icon and drag it for a custom start wherever I want it to begin. Now, if I wanted to switch back quickly to have this either starting before, centered on, or after the cut, I can simply use the commands down here at the bottom to do just that. Now, next we have the target drive where we want this transition to go to but there's something missing from the bottom of the quick transition window because in some cases you'll be adding a transition to a single edit point, but there's a lot of cases where you're gonna to wanna to get in and add a transition to multiple edit points down your timeline. What I'm gonna do is just cancel out of the quick transition window and I'm just gonna double check this transition here. Step it into effects mode, it is a one second long transition. That's good, I wanna make sure that I leave that as one second. I'm going to mark an out point down here at the end, an in point down at the beginning to encompass my four edit points here. And I'm going to come back to this edit point here again, step into the quick transition window. And now you'll notice that down at the bottom of the window, I have a couple other parameters. The first one being that I can apply this transition now to all the transition points into out. Now I'm just going to set this value to be 12. The next option that I have is to skip any existing transition effects. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, again, I just double check this transition right here, which had a duration of one second. The dissolves that I'm putting in have a duration of half a second, and I don't want to overwrite the ones that are already there by adding these new transitions. So in this case, I'm going to skip the existing transition effects. I'm simply going to say add, 
and those parameters or those dissolves have now been added to each edit point except for this one which still has the one second long dissolve to basically just speed up the whole process of adding transitions in between clips. Now with one of these what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the effect and I'm going to come back into the quick transition window. I'm going to come to the add drop down and let's switch this to be a dip to color. Now what's important to keep in mind is that by default a dip to color is always black which is slightly annoying. I'd like the ability to be able to change that here in the quick transition window but unfortunately I have to do that inside of the effects editor instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this fairly quick so that's more of a you know a very quick flash to white about five frames I think and I'm just going to say add and we're just going to add it to this one edit point right here now again by default it defaults to being black so let's step into effects mode let's come to our background color and let's simply change that to be white so now all I have to do is just back up here let's just step back into edit mode here I'm just going to hit play on the keyboard we have our flash to white just like that what I'd like to do is I'd like to get in and apply this transition to multiple edit points in my timeline. The problem is, is that by default, like I had just mentioned, the default color is black and I need the default color to be white. So how do I get in and do that? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the dissolves from all of these edit points here to give you a little bit of an idea of how this works. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna step back into effects mode and I'm gonna take this transition effect and I'm gonna drag it into my bin. Once I have it into my bin, I'm going to make sure that I'm still in effects mode and I'm going to click on each edit point by holding shift so that I can multi-select these edit points. And once I've done that, all I'm going to do is head back to that dip to white. I'm simply going to double click on it. It's now going to appear on all the selected edit points in my timeline. And I now have this flash transition all set to go with a few clicks of the mouse. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.